Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I am very excited about this particular guest that we have in the studio because, as you can see, I'm smiling a lot more than I did <laughs> at the start of the show. Now, he's the co-founder of the Future Project. He's been with the Red Media. He's one of the founders of the Red Media as well. He's done so much in the law space, the media space, and most recently, he's spreading joy all around the world by founding the organization that he calls Joy Inc. I have with me Chude Jidomo, the Minister of Joy Affairs. Yes, And Minister it. of Happiness, Happiness yeah. Affairs. We love it, we love it. We love Good it. to have yeah. you. Same here. Thank I you. think, first of all, before we start this conversation, I'd like to say happy belated birthday to Chude. Thank you. Now, I want to appreciate you for the work that you've done, not just with the Future Project, having mm. sporting, spotted out, you know, young talents and influential people who deserve to be applauded. Including the certain Olive Emma. Oh, yes! <laughs> I love that. But I would say that you are very, what you've done with Joy Inc. is amazing. Before you started Joy Inc. You've been right. intentional about supporting organizations that, are, that encourage mental health. I remember what you did for She Rights Woman, mm. you know, mentally aware. You're always speaking up about this and mm. you've touched many lives. Mm. So posterity would forever judge you fairly. Thank you, Thank Thank you so you. much, Chude, for Thank being you. such an amazing inspiration Thank and you. happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, she said <laughs> I, I, it. No, she no, delivered. No, seriously. <laughs> I, I totally agree with Olive. Right. But I would want to say this. There's something you used to do in past years that I noticed that you've stopped. Okay, like what? Your regular visits to secondary schools because Ah, right. Yes, right. because I was one of the people who actually gained from that. For real? Yeah. Look at that. School. I yes, and that. Emily, yeah. <laughs> Asimita yes. used to be the head girl when I was in GSS1. Ah, right. So when you guys did the co-joint thing about right. bringing different schools in Yaba together, ah, right. I attended that ah, one right. time, okay. but Jibola wasn't there. It yeah. was you, yeah. Emilia, and someone else. Yeah. So I don't know, but I but have still noticed do that. The future you don't do it the way you used to. Used no, to so be he's not pro probably personally so not involved in that. Mm. The last one I was you there and I spoke here. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. what the future project does, today is now he has taken the back seat and allowed other people to run with the vision <laughs> and the idea mm. while he's focusing on other things. Yeah. But I know that whichever way, they're still achieving the, the same target, even much more yeah, mm -hmm. now so. on yes, a bigger space. I think space. so. Now, we're celebrating the International Day of Happiness, happiness. in a bit, yeah. and we know that you're very particular about happiness. There are lots of people who might feel some sort of way, mm. discouraged with the way things are going, things mm. are not going as planned. Mm. How are you intentional about keeping your happiness? Hmm. Um, happiness is, is two things. One is a state of mind, and two, it's a state of being. It's not a, the, the one thing that happiness is not is a state of affairs, and that means that whatever it is that's happening in your life, you can choose to be happy. Um, now, sometimes it's politically incorrect to say that in, in, in broken down societies, like, like, like some might say Nigeria is, or in West African societies, so people think that if you say people should be happy in spite of their problems, you're saying that they should ignore their problems. And when people say that, I say, well, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> We're simply saying that people should be happy. And, you want, and, and for two reasons. One. I always say that nobody says people should not love because they are poor. Or nobody says, oh, because Nigeria is bad, don't love your wife. Mm. Or because Nigeria is bad, don't love your mother. So why should you say because Nigeria is bad, don't be happy? Yeah? These, are, these are scientifically two different things. Yeah? It is possible to be facing incredible difficulties and challenges on a personal level, on a community level, on a national level, on a global level, and still maintain a state of mind that's at peace and that's able to function optimally. And so the message is, is especially now that happiness is now crucial because it's uh, an antidote to a modern crisis of depression and anxiety. So more than at any other time, especially in societies that are troubled like ours, happiness is crucial because people need to survive incredibly mind-bending situations. And happiness, which leads to resilience, is one of the best ways of doing that. We've seen several countries, you know, adopting the whole idea of having a commissioner or a minister of happiness. Mm. You know, we saw that, I, I think, in the UAE. UAE. Do you, now we're seeing lots of people are starting to speak a lot more about mental health awareness, mm. opening up more about depression and mm. suicide. Do you think Nigeria would ever get to that point where it would be generally accepted? It has to. It, it will inevitably get to that. It's, it's, okay. Last year, um, Joy Inc. with uh, NY polls issued, you know, the, the depression report. Sixty percent of the Nigerian population are at risk of. No, they are not depressed, but they are at risk of depression, which means the significant symptoms, you know, showing. Um, um, depression is already the leading cause of disability worldwide, according to the WHO. Um, 
societies without strong health institutions are worse equipped, obviously, to handle these issues. Nigeria has a very outdated mental health, national mental health policy, abysmally low uh, number of health, mental health professionals to individuals that need mental health support. So obviously, if you have a problem that's metastasizing and you have no improvement in solutioning, mm. then it's going to get worse, yeah? And when it gets worse, what happens, if you don't take it as a priority, you will be forced to take it as a priority because you will have young people unable to go to work, mothers unable to take care of their children, fathers unable to function properly, bosses unable to lead optimally because they are dealing with anxiety, depression, and the small sliver of them will be dealing with thoughts of leaving the world. So when that happens, we will not be able to pretend that mental health is not a real issue. Mm. And we are absolutely not prepared for that moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, before we started this interview, you were telling, um, Oliver was the person telling you that it's, it's like rigorous, you yes, know, yes, yes. being in a state of happiness, yeah. and you telling yourself yeah. that I have to be happy even yeah. when it doesn't look like it, yeah. when it doesn't feel like it. So mm -hmm. how do you carry out this label, because mm -hmm. that's what it is, mm -hmm. of being happy yeah. as a person? Right. The first thing is not to think of it as labor. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I also go with this. So I say people say, fight for your joy. And to be honest, that's a useful start. Mm. If you don't really, if, you, if you're not really a happy person or you've dealt with a lot of internal turmoil, then fighting for your happiness is a good way to start thinking about it. But ultimately, to keep being happy, you have to stop fighting. Mm. You know, you have to, the first thing that leads to happiness, the first, you look at many of the, much of the research, much of the writing and thinking is acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean surrender. It doesn't mean giving up. It means saying, this thing has happened to me. I accept the reality that has happened to me. Do I want it to change? Yes. But first, I accept it. The major thing that lets people be unhappy is the resistance of reality, wanting things to be as they are not, or wanting things to be, you know, that, or wanting things that are not to be. If there's a gap between your expectation and reality constantly, that gap is where unhappiness is. So it's the first rule. Acceptance is really the first rule. Acceptance, it's multiply validated. It's validated by the science. It's validated by the philosophy, stoic philosophy, Epicurean philosophy. It's validated by Faith. religion, yeah. Buddhism, Christianity especially, Hinduism. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 this is huge. Yeah? So acceptance is the first thing. The second thing is that most people don't know. So a young person was in my, in, in my, I came to ask me for advice last week. I said, I want to find myself. I said, you know, if you've only you've already found yourself, the rest is society. Like, you know, what do you enjoy doing? You know. Like, you enjoy sitting at home. I said, why don't you spend more time with yourself at home? He said, because I'm supposed to go out. I said, where did you read this in the manual? That you're supposed to go out. If you're an introverted person and you get your energy from solitude, then why not design your life to enhance solitude? Yeah? So, for instance, I, this is my reading month. All I'm doing in March is as much as I can stay at home and read books. And people say, and I, and I acknowledge that I'm, I'm privileged. You know, I'm not economically, I'm, I'm economically able to do that without worrying about my next meal. You know, so people say, well, today is because you're a big boy, yeah? And I tell them, no, 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 I'm not as rich as, as, as I don't know, I'm not as rich as... Dangote. Dan so let's, I didn't want to say Dangote. <laughs> Dangote is too easy. I'm not as rich as Fela Joto, I'm not as rich as Patrick Tommy, I'm not as rich as, mm. you know, it is. So I could make a choice to keep doing whatever it is other people are doing in the name of making more money. But I've decided that I have only this one life, and I've identified the things that give me joy, solitude, reading, spending time with a small set of people, because if you're an introvert, the more people that are around you, the more your energy goes. And so I've deliberately designed a life in Lagos. And I don't live in Lake, I don't live in VJC, I don't live in Ikoi, I don't live in Parkview, I don't live in Banana Island, I don't live, I live in Sukulere. <laughs> <laughs> I live directly in front of the trailers, mm. you know. So this is not a question of, oh, you have to run away somewhere. And I tell people, people say, I've, not tra I've traveled out of the country once this year. And I have no, to be honest, people say, are you not traveling? I have no desire to travel because my happiness is not in a trip. It's not by a beach. It's inside me. I take it wherever I go because one of the jokes really I like to crack is, if you're unhappy and you travel, guess what? You're taking your unhappiness you're taking your, with you. You're taking your unhappiness with you. You didn't drop it in Lagos. It's still with you. Mm -hmm. No amount of views, no amount of happy place is going to do that. So most times, people think that there's some grand, radical, tra trans transformative thing they must do to have joy. But actually, it's for them to accept that who they are is who they are. What they want is what they want. What they don't have is what they don't have. And they just do whatever they can do to move themselves forward. And make small progress even can make you happy. 
But people don't know that because we've been taught that unless we have everything we want, we can't be happy. Well, we're struggling to live up to societal standards. Yes, and, you know, and I sympathize because society is a bully. Society is a bully. You go on a red carpet, you wear what you like, people are insulting you. You repeat it, it's a problem. I'm telling you, don't you know that? You know, I didn't know that this one was on the cover of Vogue. Uh, this is why he told me until two days after. And then I go up. And so the first time I hear about it is, I'm just telling the, my friend, they bother to do. And somebody say, you know what? Uh, just this just a random thing that happened today. Like, you know what? The thing didn't break the internet. And I'm like, this is one of, like, if my leg showed up on the cover of Vogue, <laughs> <laughs> if my leg showed up on the cover of Vogue, I think I'll celebrate that. And then this huge personal achievement, somebody found a way. Hmm. Society finds a way to say, Oh, it didn't break the internet. And then this person was so deliberate to begin to compare her to this actress and this actress and this actress. You know, and I'm like, that's how much of a bully society is. And if you're not a person who is self-secure, even such a huge achievement, the joy of it can be taken from you. Trudy, I'll come back to you know self-awareness and self-development because mm. that's what it boils down to at mm. the end of the day. But mm. for the person who doesn't know, I mean, I know the side of you, but for the person who doesn't know and thinks, how dare Trudy come and talk to me mm. about happiness? Have you seen life? Yeah. What have you gone through? Yeah. Why? You know, there are people who don't understand yeah. your journey. So I want you yeah. to lead us through your journey as yeah. well that led you up onto the point where you're sharing happiness. Well, first and foremost, you know, um, people always say, you know, you've not seen life to people who are rich. And I'm like, you know, they've seen life. They've just not seen life the way you've seen it. Mm -hmm. The fact that the person is wealthy doesn't mean the person hasn't seen life. The fact that you are poor doesn't mean you are more entitled to be listened or heard than the person who is wealthy. All these things are the things that let us compare ourselves to others and lose the joy in our own experience. So even if I was wealthy, my parents were rich, I wouldn't apologize. Because there are people who are wealthy, who have everything, and they are not happy. You know them. Some of them are your friends. Some of them you see them on TV. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is that, I mean, yes, I obviously wasn't born in a rich, to a rich home. I grew up in a rich hearted door. You know, I went to, I would say I'm born, bred, and buttered in Nigeria. In the primary school, I went to public secondary school. We're talking about public. I went to Debola Baptist High School. We had to bring our chairs and tables in because they didn't have chairs and tables, you know. So I've dealt with a lot, even on a health basis. I tell you, if I tell you the things I'm dealing with as a health, on a health challenge, back pain, you know, IBS, quite a bit. Uh, and, you know, and to get to where the business that we've built, and we've not even scratched the surface of what we want to do, but, you know, we've never gotten a loan, investor, or anything. So I bu we built this thing literally from zero naira. So if my revenue is a billion or whatever it is to, today or tomorrow, Everything was built from scratch. Everything was, I say that there's nobody that I know, if you see me with a minister or a president or whatever, there's nobody that I know that I didn't know by myself. Nobody that Debola knows, my co-founder, you know. So these are, these are relationships we built. It was value we built for ourselves. You know, this day, one of my favorite things to do in Lagos is to drive around, especially on, sun, on, sat, on Sundays because there's no traffic. So to drive around. And I often, and Sometimes I go with people and they see me. I'm so excited when I'm in I'm in Wadofia, when I'm in a bed, when I'm in a corn jaw, sometimes like, what's why are you happy? And I say, look, I've hustled in this Lagos. And when I was hustling, I was so desperate to leave poverty. I didn't have time to pay attention to my environment. Mm. So you're walking on the road, but you don't notice the road because all your things I need to drive a car, I need to buy a car, I need to buy a car, I need to stop hustling on this road. So now that I have a degree of comfort, I want to go back and actually take it in and be like, you know, so that's the kind of life that I've, I've lived, you know, um, and, and, you know, and, and I've overcome. So first of all, I have a huge faith in Nigeria. People ask me why, I say, because, I mean, it would be stupid for me not. Everything I've done, everything I've created, everything that I am came from Nigeria. You know, there's nothing, that I'm a made in Nigeria story. You know, my mother isn't in government, my father, no, I don't have any connections, godfathers. Every, you know, so I'm embedded in Nigeria's story. So first of all, I have a deep emotional attachment to Nigeria. And people ask me why, and I'm like, I can't explain it. You can't explain emotional attachment. Okay. So because I've survived in this country, I have an attachment to it. And I also believe that anybody can make themselves something significant here and be happy here. I know that for sure mm. because that's my life story. I didn't come from Silicon Valley. I didn't come from Harvard. I didn't come here. <laughs> Okay, mm. so the thing is, there's, there's so much we, we, we want to talk about, but we're unfortunately running out of time. Let's look at how the journey to self-awareness. Mm. So you're talking mm. about acceptance, and it's important that everybody accepts themselves. So how do you get to that point of self-awareness? Ah, my sister. <laughs> there's a lot to say there. I mean, in, in, in my own case, two things happened. I don't know what happened. 
Lag in Lagos, sometimes was, you know, my, you know, my celebrity, everybody. And so one day I was somewhere, and somebody did something, and I realized, you know what? I'm actually not having fun at this event, the red carpet event, but I'm not having fun here. Mm. And I even hustled to get this invite because they didn't send it to me. I called my friend. I'm like, why exactly did I hustle? To? Because this was like 2012 or 11 or something. Like, why exactly did I hustle to get this thing? I'm not even enjoying this. I don't even like all these people that I'm here with. You know, and so I decided I was going to stop doing anything that I didn't like to do, like, like any friends I didn't like to have, any events I didn't like to go to, any activity I didn't like. I mean, I can't remember what, but I just made that decision, you know, and I began to spend more time by myself. But still, it was after I faced depression, I think I spoke about it last time I was here, in 2016, you know, and depression is, is a terrible place to be in. And major depression is hellfire. I call it the value of the shadow of death. Mm. And just there, and just being by yourself, and just being locked up in your own soul, and having to find your way out of that darkness by yourself. And suddenly it occurs to you that thing that um, King Solomon ha said, that it's all vanity, it's all, a vanishing, it's, it's, how do you say, it's like a, a vanishing dust or something like that. And I came out of that thing to myself, all the things I expected to keep me happy failed. And the only thing that brought me out of here was a keen sense in myself that I deserved to be happy. And so it occurred to me that, oh my God, once I accept myself, once I am at peace with myself, everything else doesn't matter. And so that's how I came to a place of self-acceptance because all the things I thought would help me be accepted failed me when I was depressed. And for anybody who is happy, and you know them, you meet certain people and you just find a peace in them. You just, my friend T.Y. Bego, for instance, you see now we stand with T.Y. I just did for my birthday a worship thing with her. I was just in T.Y.'s presence and you're just like, ah, sister, oh, I'm peaceful, you know. And, and you see them all around you, you have aunties, you don't have to be celebrities, I'm just calling a celebrity because everybody knows. Mm. You have aunties, you have uncles, you have somebody on, you've met who you just thought, you enter the person's presence, there's no hustling, there's mm. no aggression, it is, it is, see. And, you know, and, I, and I came out of there thinking, that's the kind of life I want to live. One of the things I did was to do a joy compass, it's something we teach in the joy master classes, which is, what are the things that make you happy? What are the things that are essentially you? Write them down, even if you can't do them. And not external things, not, I want to go to the Bahamas. Go to the Bahamas, that's fine. Go to the Bahamas because you want to experience it, you want to see the world, not to make yourself happy. You know, I want to drive XYZ car. I want to, I want to buy a private jet. My sister, I have to buy it. <laughs> you know, but I'm Very not going important. to. Exactly. I need to buy a private jet. I need to buy an island. Two things. <laughs> but I'm not going to wait for those. I don't even. Those things are not going to increase my happiness by 1%. They're going to meet an already happy person. Mm. And so I write down and find what are the internalities, not the externalities. What are the things of myself? What are the kind of people I like to be? What are the kind of shows I like to go to? What kind of events I want to go to? What are the kind of places? Where do I want to live? Yeah? Where do I want to live? Why do you want to move to Kuwait? Why do you want to spend your money going to Kuwait? Because everybody says Kuwait is old money. Is that what you really want to do with your life? Do you really want to live in Lekki with the bad water? Or would you prefer, <laughs> or would you prefer to stay that in was a... Deep. Below <laughs> the <belt. laughs> to that was deep. To stay in a with the clean water <laughs> and your family around you. You know, these are things you have to ask yourself. Why are you doing things? Are you doing them because you think you should do them? Why are you doing them because you want to do them? Something in your heart says, this is what is for me. And if you're able to map that out and live with complete authenticity and integrity, by which I mean you do what you want to do when you want to do it. The only thing that stops you is maybe there is a war or there is poverty or you have a bad boy. But anything that's within your power to do that feels right in your spirit, you do it. Mm. If we continue this conversation, we will not wrap up today because there's so much to be explored in this conversation mm -hmm. about how to be intentional with your joy and your happiness. But I know that you also do co coachings and yeah. all. You yeah. do online courses as yeah. well. Yeah. How can people follow you up on right. social media to find out what you do? Well, social media, I go off and on. You know. Yes, actually, I can <laughs> testify to that. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but I tweet very regularly. So at Trudy on Twitter. And I constantly tweet things that I'm learning about my life. So mm. that's, you know. But I also run a daily newsletter. The daily, um, the vulnerable. daily vulnerable and it's free you know so every morning for two minutes you get a, a, a letter from me at 6 a.m you can sign up at mytdv.com right. yeah so that's yeah and then i also run one joy for christians and you can sign up for that one on retailchristianity.com so those are the ways people can get help okay day. so i know there's a certain um incumbent governor who's living in Eastern Nigeria, right. um, oh, had yeah. a commission of happiness. I don't think that's still happening uh, now. Well, I know, but if we were to have one and we decided to give you, would you take the position? 
That's very interesting. You know, I was actually just thinking about that at the start. That's that interesting. If we do have a commissioner of happiness or would a minister of happiness, I'm sure that. Actually, I think I would. All right. You know, I think I would. Actually, you know, and it's because I have to, I like to answer any question I'm asked, you know, but I think I would. You know, you people have been invited to join government and I'm like, this is so boring. You stand up in meetings, you pretend that, you know, Nigerian government is a mess. But this one, joy. I would do it. So if we do get to the point <laughs> where we do get to the point where we'd have a commissioner or a minister of happiness, Chude Jidonwo is our representative and our candidate. Please oh, take yes. notes. Thank you so much for thank joining us so today. Much. And Always thank you pleasure. so for sharing your story so Always selflessly and sharing Always. your joy. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.